Thanks, Chris. Um, obviously, there are a lot of people who are have very fond memories of Sister Joan, since there are so many of her former students lined up for tonight. I hope you enjoy it. For those who don't know her, Sister Joan Helm att attended Hamilton Teachers College. She taught and was principal in schools in Kitchener, St. Clements, England, and was the principal at Notre Dame Academy here in Waterdown from 1973 to 78. She is a guidance counselor at St. Louis Adult Learning Center in Waterloo and has been the archivist for our Canadian province at Notre Dame Convent since 2003. So if you'll just bear with us, I'll get her set up. Oh, is that it? All right. Yes, there you now, go. Now, hopefully you can hear me now. Yes, I can. Uh, and that sketch, you see uh, Caroline Gerhardinger. Uh, she attended the schools by uh, run by the canonesses of St. Augustine. But in 1809, all church institutions were secularized. Now, Bishop Whitman was very concerned that the young girls would not get a Christian education and he asked Caroline Gerhardinger if she would teach the girls, which she did for a number of years. Bishop Whitman also recognized that she had the potential to begin a religious congregation. And, and so she's the one that founded the School Sisters of Notre Dame. It is, it isn't going now. I can't go to the next. What did you do? Nothing. It's just slow, I guess. Okay, this um, in 1847. Mother Teresa brought five sisters to United States to teach the German immigrant children. And more sisters from Germany came across the ocean as well. And also new members came from United States. And so the congregation grew. Now, on October the 7th, in 1871, Mother Caroline, the superior, brought two sisters to St. Agatha Orphanage in St. Agatha, Ontario, to take charge of the orphan children. It was Father Eugene Funken who um, requested Mother Caroline to bring sisters to take charge of the orphanage. There were about 20 orphan children at the time. So on October 7th of this year, 2021, we marked the 150th anniversary of our presence in Canada. And of course we celebrated that. Now, what you see here is a building at the bottom. Um, and I'll, I'll backtrack a bit. In 1907, the Ontario government legislated that all teachers in Ontario had to be qualified with an Ontario teaching certificate. Many of our sisters were from the United States and so they weren't qualified. So summer school was held and they did qualify. But it, it was obvious that any girls entering in Canada had to be educated so that they could uh, go enter uh, the 
or pass the departmental exams and enter normal school, which is teacher's college or university. So Sister Leoba is the one that started St. Anne's High School in what was then Berlin, Kitchener, uh, and for girls interested in our order, but also girls in the local area who did not want to go to the public high school. So that school was uh, operated until 1927. Now the other photo with those uh, women there are the candidates. Um, and they, um, many of them became school sisters of Notre Dame. So that was taken about 1917. Now coming to Waterdown. Um, you, the sisters that taught here in Canada were young sisters and they'd have to go across the border to the United States in order to uh, take temporary vows and then back again to teach and then across the border again in order to uh, take final profession. And so it was back and forth across the border. And there was a head tax of $50 uh, for each person, which could be recouped, but that was troublesome as well. Also, uh, the, the superior in North America thought it's high time that the Canadian province had a province of their own where the young women could receive their, uh, their formation right here in Canada. Now, when Bishop McNally heard this, he wanted the mother house to be built within the Hamilton, in his diocese, the Hamilton diocese. So he personally got involved in looking for property. And, and so here you have uh, this building, our mother house uh, in Waterdown, which was uh, built and uh, completed in 1927. And at that time, Waterdown was a village with only um, I forget the exact number, uh, was it, uh, they only had uh, about 931 uh, inhabitants at the time. Now I'll show you more photos of water down in those early days. You can see there were trees around. When we brought the, bought the property, we bought 196 acres. Um, we no longer have that amount of, uh, of acreage because we've sold some of it. If you notice that entrance, it's a gravel road that leads into the mother house. And those two pillars are very close. So not very wide for cars or trucks. Again, you see the gravel road there. Now, <clears throat> this is taken later and you see uh, gates there and the candidates after uh, supper would have to go out and close those gates. I don't know what that did to keep people out of our property, but anyway, that's what they did. Now, if you look at the building, uh, the top floor was a bedroom area for sisters. And more importantly, it was the bedroom area for our boarders. We had boarders from Mexico, from Trinidad, from Jamaica, other West Indy countries from Hong Kong. We had boarders that didn't live close enough to uh, come as a day student, so they came as well. And so uh, the, uh, the, room, the bedrooms for the boarders were on fourth floor. Third floor was a classroom area for the girls. Um, and the second floor, there were a lot of, there were offices on second floor and the protrusion there on the uh, east side, the left side, uh, on second floor, that was the chapel, the first chapel. And then the bottom floor, of course, was the kitchen and dining rooms, because there was a dining room for the boarders, one for the sisters, one for the novices, one for the candidates. Uh, so uh, it wasn't a common uh, dining room. This is the back end of the, uh, the building. Now, as you see, there, um, 
between the main building and what was the uh, the laundry, uh, you see uh, garages for cars. Prior to that, that area was a small gym, which was used for uh, the girls in the academy. There were many trees and uh, on our property, orchards. We had fruit trees, and uh, and of course they came in very handy uh, to feed everyone. Here you see the statue of Mary, which is on the east side, and there's the pavilion. Uh, that pavilion uh, would uh, was often used for gatherings or just groups go out there or have a picnic lunch out there. Now behind that was uh, a gully that led down to the, uh, the water down falls. And so we would go down that gully. Um, it, it wasn't very easy climbing down because it, it was a steep hill, but coming up was a lot worse. And of course now it's all overgrown. This is a, a more recent photo of, of that uh, pavilion. Now, the first chapel, as I told you, was on the second floor uh, on the east side. Uh, so there you see the, uh, the, the main altar, the statues. And if you look at those pews, they're wooden and so, there were no padded kneelers. So when you knelt, you knelt on wood. And I remember as a candidate, I thought, okay, I'm gonna be quite clever and I will take my, my long skirt, a uh, black skirt and fold it up and kneel on it. Well, that was fine. But when I got up, it was all creased. So that was a giveaway that, that I was doing that. So I couldn't do that anymore. <laughs> now, even though there are windows on three sides, and in the summer we'd have those windows open, but it would be so hot, you know, with our old habit on, our first habit on, it was really hot in the chapel. And there uh, is another um, photo of the chapel, and you see the communion rail. When we went up to communion, we always knelt down to receive the Eucharist. Now, this is the, uh, the chapel, as, uh, which was the chapel. It's our library. And uh, you see there um, computers. The computers in this room have internet. We have computers in another room on first floor for sisters who are interested in playing games on them. But they don't play any games on these. Now in 1956, <clears throat> we were able to build a chapel. Uh, so uh, this was, uh, the architect was Peter Tillman and it was uh, the interior design was Dora de Pedri Hunt who came from uh, Hungary. And here's a, a photo of her. Later on, she got, she was very involved in commit, uh, designing commemorative medals. Here's another photo. Uh, after Vatican II, the celebrant no longer had his back to the congregation. And so the altar that was at the very back or front was then moved forward on a, as you see on a, a round sort of uh, circle there. Now those windows, there are 14 stained glass windows and it was uh, Yvonne Williams uh, who, uh, who designed those windows. Each window has 2,400 three inch squares and they form the mosaic and beautiful uh, coloring, jewel-like actually actually. Each window represents uh, some person or saint connected uh, to our congregation. Now you can't see it, but at the back, at 
the top, we have uh, an organ, the Cassavant organ. And as you know, that's one of the famous organs uh, from Quebec. Now, this was the boarders dining room in the early years. And actually that would have been taken about 1928 before the paintings were on the wall. Notice the, uh, the it's a hardwood floor and white tablecloths. And we have ferns all over. <coughs> this is the dining room as it is now. And you can see the paintings on the wall. These paintings were done by Sister Gertrude Klein, who was a sister to Mother Baptist Klein, who was our first provincial leader. And Sister Gertrude studied in Europe and uh, many of her paintings adorn the walls within our mother house here. When the ceiling was lowered in 1927, uh, 1997, when we renovated, of course, uh, the paintings, the, the ceilings couldn't go to the very edge of the walls because it would cover those paintings. Here you see a close up of some of the paintings and the one on the left is Nipigon River. And we had parlors when uh, visitors came to visit. And this was called the wicker parlor because of all the furniture was made of wicker. Again, and that painting at the back was uh, the Bethlehem scene by Sister Gertrude uh, Klein. It's a huge painting and beautiful. Another parlor. So you see the parlors there. Now to the left is a sister's dining room. We sisters, this may sound strange to you, but we sisters uh, did not eat with um, the boarders or the candidates or the novices. We had a dining room of our own. Uh, and so you see there the long tables quite monastic looking actually. <laughs> and then to the right, you see the kitchen. Um, now you can imagine, well, the two there without the veil on, just uh, some head covering are candidates. Now you can imagine how hot it would be in the kitchen to uh, cook with the, uh, the full habit on, but they did. Now this, I think this floor is so interesting because it, it is the original floor in the kitchen and it's terraza. Uh, and that will be, it's going on 95 years this coming February. So it's still in very good repair. Now, if we look and we had a farm and we had a farmer take care of our cattle. And in behind this barn, we had a pigsty. We had uh, chickens as well. There you see some of the cattle roaming about. And uh, we had large gardens. Uh, and this shows the uh, the vineyard and the uh, and the berry patch. We had wonderful raspberry bushes and flowers. There were flower gardens all around. Um, so every on the east side, the west side, all over the place, there were lovely flowers, and the sisters tended those. And Sister Antonio, she got that little pond going for the ducks. And on the right-hand side, that is the hen house. Of course, that isn't around anymore. Um, there you see some of the, uh, the falls or the water leading to it. And on the right is a hut. And when Mother Baptist and Sister Othwina 
would supervise the building of the mother house here, they would spend a night in the hut there. Um, I don't know how comfortable it was, but anyway, it was a covering for them, uh, at least for the time being. Uh, often it was used just to, not to go inside, but there is a lovely oak tree uh, outside that, which is still there. Uh, and uh, often you'd see the candidates or other sisters out there just enjoying themselves. Now you might find these buses quite interesting. In the mother house, the sisters that taught in Hamilton lived in Waterdown. And so each morning, a bus would take the sisters to the different schools they taught in Hamilton and then pick up the girls from Hamilton who attended our academy. And then at the end of the school day, the bus would take the girls back to Hamilton and pick up the sisters and bring them back to Waterdown. That went on until 1945 when uh, a castle-like uh, building or house uh, was purchased in Hamilton on Ravenscliff Avenue. And there were over 20 teachers that lived there at the time and they could more readily get to their schools. Of course, having a band was so important. These are candidates. If they didn't know what to play or how to play any of the instruments, they were taught and they joined, <laughs> they joined a band. Not in my day, thanks be. Anyway, so whenever there were visitors here, then uh, they would play and entertain them. Here again, you see the spaciousness of of our property. Now there you see uh, in the white veils, those are novices and sisters there. And that is the uh, digging of the soil for our chapel. And to the right there, you see the building and the construction of the chapel. Now, what you see in front of you is what we call the villa wing. And um, that was built in 1964. The top floor was a bedroom for sisters because we had sisters teaching here in the academy and other sisters that worked within the house. The third floor was for our infirm sisters. And then the second floor was uh, individual bedrooms for our senior sisters. And there was also a library and a chapel and, uh, and lounges. And the bottom floor then was a dining room for our senior sisters and more bedrooms and a huge, we called it community room. You might call it a, a lounge, uh, a, a huge lounge where sisters could gather and comfortable chairs. And the bottom was our bowling alley which was quite something for both students and the sisters. So there you see a, a photo of the bowling alley. Now, this is the other side of the villa wing. And on third floor there, you see an outdoor porch where the, sister, the senior sisters could come out and enjoy fresh air. And then uh, the floor beneath them, you see those windows. That was the chapel. Uh, and the breezeway went from the villa over to our main chapel. Now, if you look at the, uh, the extensions on the east and west side, you will see a fire escape, a built in fire escape, uh, because I think it was in the late 70s or early 80s when uh, the fire department required that. And it really took away from the, uh, the, uh, the beauty <laughs> of, of the building because the bricks are not matching the building at all. But if you look there, you see the chapel in the center extending out. And you see on the right-hand side, you see uh, 
uh, the villa. And another photo of the grounds. Now in 1997, uh, or prior to that, we knew that there were more senior sisters and we had to have adequate uh, rooms for them. And, we, and so the decision had to be made. Do we uh, tear down this main building, 1927, and use the villa to build, renovate, or do we use this other 1927 one? Well, we've always had problems with that uh, the villa. There were plumbing problems constantly. Uh, so it was decided that the renovation would take place in this main building here. Um, and so on the left-hand side, so that started on March 17th, 1997. And uh, move, movement into the third floor was happened in about March, I think it was. And on the left-hand side there, you see a picture of Sister Eileen Marie. She was in charge of the... Uh, of the healthcare and beside her is Joan McDonald who was her assistant. And that was one of the first days after the sisters moved down to the renovated third floor. And there you see Sister Jane Francis happily sitting in her new spacious bedroom with a ensuite as well. And each room had its own telephone. And then on the right hand side, you see Sister Carmel hanging um, uh, the uh, artwork of Sister Claire, her sister. That was a, a beautiful piece of artwork. I don't know where it is now, probably with the family, but it really was a beautiful piece that Sister Claire Farwell did. Uh, Mrs. Babington had uh, a room on first floor for preschoolers. And I think this is... Uh, Halloween time, I think, she would bring these preschoolers in and, and they would uh, enjoy visiting our senior sisters. And here we have Notre Dame Academy. Now, this is one of the, uh, the first uh, photos taken. And here are the boarders around 1930 and they're wearing their Sunday dress. You will notice they all are wearing black stockings as well. And there are a few very young girls. In the early days, we did have some young girls stay as boarders, uh, but uh, that really didn't continue. Although we had younger children uh, in elementary grades, uh, they were taught here until 1951 when St. Thomas School was built. So you notice there are those old desks. Plays were always important. So plays were put on each year. This is in one of the early years. I don't know the name of that play. Now, how do you like that for being dressed for skiing? It wouldn't be too comfortable or too warm, I don't imagine, but these senior boarders look quite happy uh, enjoying the outdoor winter time. Sports was always important in the academy. And so here we have girls who play tennis and there we have them playing basketball outdoors. And this is a basketball team. And the girls played um, with other, uh, other uh, schools that were all girls schools. And they also, there was also intramural sports as well. And of course, underneath the chapel, um, the new chapel was a large gym. And uh, of course that was used very well for phys ed and sports. Now, how do you like that for, for desks again for, <laughs> for high school? That, that it, that's a sister with the first habit. So that's prior to 1963. In 1963, we went to a more modified habit. So the girls look very attentive in that French class. 
And the borders, there were two or three borders in a, in a bedroom. And these, uh, this would have been in about the 1960s, 70s, according to the blazer. And if you, you notice on um, each girl had a washstand, there weren't showers in those days. There were bathtubs, but no showers. And so you notice there a basin on the washstand, um, which I guess the girls got used to using. And of course, there you see somebody reading a letter, which would be so important when you're far away from home. And graduation was a big, big day. And uh, if you notice there on the front steps of, of, the, uh, of the mother house here, you see the girls uh, standing at, with, uh, for graduation. And if the weather was good, the graduation was held outside and there were chairs on the lawn uh, for their parents and relatives to enjoy. Now in 1977, it was the 50th anniversary of our Canadian province of our mother house. And of course there was a huge banquet and girls, uh, former students came from various parts of, uh, of the world in order to be, uh, to come back and enjoy a few days uh, in water down again. Now, this is the uniform through the years. So you will see the first uniform is everyday uniform. And then the second one was the Sunday uniform. And then of course, that uniform changed and it changed through the years, then we had that blazer, and then we had a, a type of jumper with a, a long sleeve blue blouse. So those are the uniforms through the years. And of course, plays again. This is one of the first reunions. I think it probably was in 1950, according to uh, the type of clothing they're wearing. And if you notice, uh, many of them are wearing hats. Now, yearbooks were very, are, are very important. Of course, I had yearbooks from each of the years and often look at them. Sister Sharon, who lives here and was principal um, prior to, uh, myself after Sister uh, <clears throat> Pat uh, Soup died, Sister Marie LeClaire. And then she was, uh, Sharon was principal at the very end when we closed in 1983. So we often uh, go to those yearbooks and look up photos of, of former students. And here are some photos from reunions. So those of you who are watching might recognize yourself on one of those photos. And of course, reunions are so exciting. Um, I would stand at the front entrance and greet everyone as they came in and it was just so, so thrilling. And seeing the girls, uh, and of course we had to have name tags, that helped a lot. Um, but I was pretty good in recognizing most, these, most students. Again, here is another group of girls. From the, this was the last reunion. Another group. And I understand that, uh, that uh, some of the students get together on Facebook or FaceTime and get together uh, at various times, which is wonderful. So now we move to art. This painting was in the dining room uh, where the board, first the borders dining room and now the main dining room. Um, and it was the only painting on canvas and when we renovated in 1997, we removed the wall between two pillars 
and this painting was on there and we could remove it because it, again, it was the only one on canvas and it is now uh, outside the dining room on the first floor. It's a huge painting by Sister Gertrude Klein. And this again is that uh, Bethlehem scene. And again, it's huge. And see all the ceilings were lowered during the renovation. And the only ceiling that wasn't lowered too low was on fourth floor. And so we put that painting on fourth floor in the corridor. Another painting of Sister Gertrude Klein. This is Sister Margaret Jackman. On the left, and she uh, did these as part of her degree work in art. The first on the left is dark, darkness to light. And then the one on the right is Mary, queen of the universe. And uh, it is done in a very special type of artwork. And this is Sister Evelyn. Uh, Volk, who did this painting on felt. Now we took down the villa, that extension, and uh, in its place, we put up what we call a Jubilee garden, called Jubilee because it went up in the year 2000. Uh, now, these are some of the photos from the earlier days. Those trees now have really grown. And, uh, and of course, uh, you see there different flowers. Now, when the academy closed and we had the uh, third floor where it used to be classroom areas, uh, Montessori, <clears throat> excuse me, Montessori was interested in renting uh, some rooms, which they did. But then after we renovated, then uh, they built this in 2000, they built this prefab building uh, on our baseball diamond. So that is still uh, in operation for Montessori School. Now the cemetery, when the first, when the first, I think it was eight sisters who died, they were buried across the Snake Road on what we called the Pine Grove up on the hill because we did not have that property uh, behind our house. And it was Mr. Piggott uh, who told Mother Baptist, he said, do you realize that a factory is going to be built behind your house? And so Mother Baptist thought that can't happen. And so she got uh, the different uh, convents to borrow money from the bank, and she was able to buy that property. And then it became the cemetery. So the photo on the top right would have been the beginning of our cemetery and the sisters then were uh, brought back from uh, Pine Grove. Uh, they were relocated then, as you see in the bottom one on the right hand side. And then um, on the top left hand side, you'll see a, a circle with a shrub around. Well, there were uh, sisters who were in leadership uh, were buried there. And of course, then the bottom one just shows the entrance into, uh, into the cemetery. Again, more photos of the cemetery. Now, Lynn went to, uh, oh, okay, so to backtrack a bit, we decided because we we're selling our mother house, it would be wise to really relocate the sisters buried in a cemetery behind our convent to, um, to the Gate of Heaven Cemetery, which is operated by the Hamilton Diocese and just a mile down the road on Snake Road. And, and so um, it was a, a huge undertaking for 309 deceased sisters. And so it was uh, 
completed by the end of October in 2019. And Lynn went out and took these photos uh, at the uh, Gate of Heaven Cemetery. And as you see um, that, uh, that sort of pathway into the center, we are having a monument made with our name on, and of course our logo, uh, and that'll be in the center. And also then on either side will be plaques with names of sisters who are not buried here in Waterdown, because we have sisters buried in, in, uh, in St. Clements, in Kitchener. Uh, we have sisters buried in Formosa, and of course in England. And, and so their names are on a plaque and they will be recognized here. We're, uh, and, um, we Canadian sisters, uh, the Canadian province was responsible for our missions in England as of 1934. And so we had convent schools in Woolwich, in Faversham, in Crowborough, and this is Lingfield. Um, on the left-hand side, uh, we uh, bought Batner's Hall uh, after World War II, and, um, and that then became a school for uh, boarders and day students in Lingfield, Surrey. And what you see where the sisters are standing in front was called, were the stables, actually, but then they were renovated and they really are very nice uh, classrooms. I was headmistress there for a number of years in the uh, 80s, early 80s. Now the, um, the, the building on the right is Leclerc Hall. And that was where the senior boarders lived. And there would be about 40 senior boarders and they were uh, in, Eng in Lingfield, England, they were from about age uh, 13, 14, right up to age 18, 19. And there were some classrooms there too. But of course, extensions have been placed on those buildings through the years, especially uh, Leclerc. England, the schools in England seem to enjoy climbing frames indoors and outdoors. So this is a primary class in, uh, in Lingfield and the children are enjoying, and obviously it's summer, they're wearing, the girls are wearing their summer dresses. And uh, that is our, uh, see we changed from our original habit in 1963. So from 1963 to 1969, that is the habit uh, that we wore. In 1969, we went to then um, regular uh, street length suits, skirts, blouses, and so on. Um, now in 1961, we had four sisters go down to Bolivia and that's sister Helen there. Uh, with some uh, children in Bolivia. And in 1965, we went to Peru and that's uh, Sister Besa, uh, who is a Peruvian school sister of Notre Dame and she's teaching there. And they also taught women sewing so that they could make some money uh, with the, their different uh, uh, abilities. And here we have boys uh, learning how to uh, do some gardening. And that again is in Peru. Now <clears throat> on the right is uh, in 1971, we opened our first mission in Arrowland, Ontario, Northern Ontario. And that was where we had, uh, uh, it was uh, not a reserve, but there were indigenous uh, people living there. Of course, we had more uh, missions in the north as well. There you see Sister Barbara with two girls in their traditional dress, in, and that's in Thompson, Manitoba. <clears throat> and to your right 
you see Sister Pauline and Sister Joan Liss, <clears throat> excuse me, and that's in uh, Fort Resolution. And uh, they didn't teach school there, and they their house was sort of like a welcoming center for anyone to come and uh, enjoy themselves or play games or whatever. And <clears throat> this is Joan Liss in Fort Resolution, and she had a radio program once a week where she offered reflections. We also had sisters go to Africa, and that's Sister Vivian with her white hair, and she was headmistress of the school in, this is Sunyani, Ghana. And if you look at that lady on the right-hand side with that uh, colorful robe on, that is the, the wife uh, of the uh, <clears throat> president or prime minister in, in Ghana. And he visited, she visited the school. This is another view of... Uh, the girls at the school. It was an all girls school. We're coming to the end of our PowerPoint here and there you see uh, all the files in the, in the archives. And of course, uh, that table uh, uh, has changes from time to time uh, with various displays. And one of the displays is this little Red Riding Hood sisters, um, Edith made 3,200 of these dolls. She would be commissioned to make these dolls. And if you lift up the skirt of Red Riding Hood, then you'll see the grandmother. And she has a nice skirt on as well. And then if you take the bonnet off the head of, of the grandmother, you see the wolf. So it's a very cute little, Red Riding Hood. Here are some other uh, uh, items that we have in, in, the, uh, in the heritage room. That bulb was the bulbs in our original ceilings. And then a door handle, you see that? And of course, as I said before, we didn't have showers. And so we had basins and, and a pitcher. So it was quite different in those early years. And these are some uh, articles on the top shelf from, uh, for baking, and then uh, some of the old readers uh, from years back. Now, the, uh, the building is different now because you see those old cars that went under that dry, uh, under the uh, entrance? Well, that pathway or roadway was very narrow. And so when we renovated in 1997, we removed those steps um, and widened the driveway underneath uh, so that cars and not trucks, but uh, at least higher, uh, vans could get through. And this is a lovely photo of the present. Notice how wide the, uh, those, uh, the driveway is because as you know, the trucks got larger and larger. So the trucks that would come in to bring in uh, uh, various uh, groceries and other things, they needed uh, uh, some width to get into. Now, you probably are wondering what's happening. Well, there, uh, the sale of our building is making, is progressing forward. And um, it will be an international boarding school, co-ed. And it will be on first and second floors. We will lease third and fourth floors of course, the chapel, and we will have a common, uh, well, we'll share the, uh, the dining room because we only have that one dining room. Now, our future buyer is waiting for the Niagara Escarpment Commission to give the final okay 
uh, to have this school there. So it would seem that maybe by the end of December, permission might be granted. So that's the state of affairs for Notre Dame Convent. So this is uh, the end of the PowerPoint. Now what happens here? So stop sharing your screen. I don't know if you have any questions that might be. Thank you very much, Sister Joan. Um, if anybody has any questions, we can uh, we can take them now. If you want to unmute and say hi. Hi, Maria. <laughs> Hello, Sister Joan. Hi. <laughs> Good to see all of you. Yes, you look fantastic. It's amazing to see all of you. Now, I don't recognize everybody's last name, although I know most of them. <laughs> there won't be any more reunions. It's too difficult to organize, especially now that we belong to the Atlantic Midwest province, uh, before I could control the, the day so that nothing else would be happening on that day but uh, I don't have that control anymore. So uh, we'll just have to enjoy one another as best we can. <laughs> so Sister Jill, may I ask you, where are you living now? I am living here in Waterdown. I have a lovely room on fourth floor and I'm in my office now on second floor. Um, and the heritage is next door to me. Um, I am going to be getting two rooms on fourth floor where I can transfer some of the archives um, and heritage uh, into those rooms. So, um, so I have to do some relocating. However, that's the way it is. <laughs> well, Sister Joe, do you need any help? Do I need any help? Well, at this point, I don't need any help because I have to organize stuff yet. <laughs> But if I do, I'll call on, on you to help. <laughs> Please, I, I am I'm available okay. uh, all, uh, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I have two sisters who are willing to help me and they say, give me a plan, give me a plan. Well, I don't have a plan ready yet. <laughs> I've, I've been putting it off. <laughs> anyway, I can't put it off that much longer. <laughs> Anyway. I'd like to say hello to Rocio in Mexico. Good to see you. <laughs> yes. So Jane, Jane Wojcik, what what was your name as a student here? Um, Meager. Oh, for heaven's sakes. And my sister is in here too someplace, sister. Um, yes, I graduated from Notre Dame grade 12 in 1973. So it's lovely to see and um, thank you so much for this. Oh, well, this is a, a great joy to, uh, and, and Brenda Leanders, I see you. I can't see every name here. Cheryl, I know you're somewhere there. But I And then there's Aaron. Oh, Aaron, yes. Actually, uh, it was Sister Elaine who told me that you were able, uh, were going to connect here. And that Absolutely. Was, and that was my first inkling that uh, students might be involved. And I got- Oh, so, lots of us. You look awesome. I got so excited and I've been telling all the nuns that I made a special announcement at, uh, at uh, supper tonight uh, that- uh, there were so many former students that were going to be involved. So that's great. Good to see you. Thank you. I'll, um, I'll give uh, greetings to uh, Sister Sharon as well. Sister yes, Sharon, please. Sister Thank Sharon you. lives yeah. here. So we have 51 sisters living here now. Uh, wow. Several are in their 90s, of course. One is 101. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. And she doesn't use the elevator. She uses steps. Oh, my gosh. For, for first oh, floor, God. of course, which I don't do. <laughs> oh, sister, and, sister Joan, it's Cindy Leanders here. 
um, yes. to say hello. It says Cindy Schillings. That's my married name now. But I just wanted you to see behind me is my dad here and my mom over here. Can you see them? Wait, wait, wait. a second here. I got to get here. Who is she talking about? Here, here. So, oh, I get Joe, it. Joe and Frida Leanders. Oh, yes. Behind me there. So oh. I'm at my parents watching. Oh, that's wonderful. That's so, great. Yeah. Wonderful. So Where nice do you live? live? I live in Oshawa, but my parents are in Guelph. Well, so, yeah. oh, that's yeah. nearby. Yeah. Yeah. So, just wanted to say hello. Great. Good. Denise. Denise. Oh, my goodness. Yes. <laughs> I'll be going to the yearbooks again. I've got them all all the 70s together, the 80s, the 60s, so I can easily go to those yearbooks and recall a lot. So, Stephanie, wait, let's see, who's Stephanie here? And that, Kathy Gunn, hi. How's your sister? Yeah. Yeah, my yeah. sister's watching you too. Oh. <laughs> How oh. are you? Yes. You look wonderful. Oh, that's <laughs> not really. Linda Ventley, did you recognize yourself? Weren't you wearing one of the uniforms? No, I got mixed up. Michelle Elias, what are you doing here? <laughs> that's a former... Uh, teacher at St. Mary's High School in Kitchener. <laughs> I, I heard from Nancy Jameson that you were going to be talking about Notre Dame. So Nancy's watching too. Oh, Nancy great. Ulrich, we, we, loved, we loved working with you at St. Mary's. Yeah. You look, you look oh. fantastic. Oh, those were great days. They sure were. <laughs> yes, yes. Sister Joan? Yes. Nancy here, Nancy Ulrich. And I just want to tell you that the, the teacher I became is all your fault. You're Nancy Ulrich? Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's years. Yeah. Wait till, wait till I tell Sister Maureen. You? Oh, Sister okay, Maureen lives help. here. Good. That'd be wonderful. Oh, isn't that great? Where do you live, Nancy? Washago. Oh. Well, North Korea. Yeah. Oh, great. Good seeing you. And you too. Wonderful presentation. <laughs> well, I tried. I, pra I practiced. I practiced I a lot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, this is just great. You saw your old, uh, who's that? Karen Nicholson, you saw your brother in one of the old photos. He attended, oh, and that would have been the uh, elementary school children. That, that's right. My brother, both my brothers attended Notre Dame before St. Thomas was built. Oh, yes. And then, and then I attended Notre Dame uh, from grade nine to 13. I mean, they had a grade 13 when, when I went to school. So Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Many, many fond memories. In fact, I was visiting a friend on the weekend and I met her at Notre Dame in grade 10 and we've stayed in touch all these years. So oh, lots of yeah. wonderful memories and friendships uh, from oh. those days for sure. Well, yes, that's another thing I wanted to say about the academy. There seemed to be a great bonding of, uh, of students, you know, getting because you lived so closely together and you knew pretty well everybody, you know. And, and one thing I think of so much, um, we have a, a, a water fountain with cold water on first floor outside of the dining room. And I, when I go there and take a drink, I thought, oh, the girls would just love to have <laughs> that now because you didn't have that in those days. And you had to climb all those steps. <laughs> oh dear. So well, this is wonderful. I'm so pleased to uh, see so many of you and hear so many of you. So we'll try and keep in touch. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, 
I, I really do like my computer in my office here. Um, I have a, uh, an iPad, an old iPad in my bedroom, but uh, it's the one in the office where I respond most. So thanks again, everybody. I hope, uh, I hope I didn't bore you with information, but uh, anyway, it's just been wonderful chatting with all of you again. So God bless all of you and hope to be in touch. Take care, and Sister Joan. We love safe. you. Thanks, Sister Joan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Bye. Okay. Thank you so much, Sister Joan. Thank oh, you. Thank you. It was a great Joe. presentation. Thank you.